Last Sunday morning was Easter morning or resurrection morning. I started at, just turn me up just slightly. I feel I need to exhort my voice and I, I don't. Uh, and I talked to you about the death Jesus died. And if you weren't here last Sunday, I would encourage you to go online and listen to it as it has come online today, that message from last Sunday. And I really believe that God was speaking to us by the Holy Spirit. And I feel to continue on this, and I will call it the life I now live. And we're going to talk about it this Sunday and next Sunday, and maybe even the following. But it's so important, dear friends, that we realize how valuable the power of his death is. The Bible says in Timothy that Jesus abolished death, abolished it, and brought life and immortality to light. He manifested it. He revealed it. You see, sometimes people say, I don't really know the hereafter. You ever heard that? And people sometimes say, I don't know if there's going to be anything beyond the grave. Who is there to tell us? Who's come back from the grave to tell us? Jesus Christ has come back from the grave to tell us. That's why he is called the living hope. And that's why the Bible says we have been made alive by God to a living hope. We have been made alive by God to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for us who are being kept by the power of God to salvation that is ready to be revealed, this salvation. Now, we have this salvation by God's mercy through Jesus Christ by being made new inwardly, daily. And now we live because He lives. He is our life. Colossians 3 verse 4 says, Christ is our life. The life that I now live in this body is not my own. It is the life of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I have this treasure of his life in this earthen vessel, and so do you who believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. We have this treasure of his life in this earthen vessel so that it might be evident to all that what we have is from God, that we have a new birth a new birth. We are born again, made alive together with Jesus Christ. How many of you could say amen to this? Amen. That in simplicity is Christianity, but that is not possible if it were not for the death he died. Why? Your old nature would still have full command of you. Your sin nature, the Adamic nature, would still have full command. So you couldn't live the other life because the other life is not in command. The old life is in command. The only way the new life can be com in command if the old life is put to death. Come on now. You can't be a caterpillar and a butterfly at the same time. The caterpillar is the caterpillar, but the caterpillar dies, and the butterfly lives. And that's one of God's little bitty signs of what it means to be born again. And the, cat, the butterfly does not look like the caterpillar, and does not walk like the caterpillar, and does not act like the caterpillar. He waves on the wind, with the beauty of wings that were hidden and now are made manifest. There's a life with God that's been hidden, but it's supposed to be made manifest in you and me. It's supposed to be made manifest. And Jesus shows us 
what we have after the grave. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, please. Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. And here we see Jesus in his resurrected life. Now as these, now as they said these things, as who? As Caius, uh, Clopas, Clopas, which was the uncle of Joseph, Joseph and Mary. So Joseph's brother was Cleopas, who was married to Mary. I think everybody in those days was either called Mary or Saloma. Uh, seriously, I mean, it's like everybody is Mary. Mary, 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 Mary. Quite contrary. But anyway, <laughs> so Cleopas was married to Mary. So Cleopas was the uncle of Jesus, so to speak, the brother of Joseph. And they lived in a town called Emmaus. Three days after the resurrection, they were, no, 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 on Sunday, of the resurrection, they were walking to, on the resurrection on Sunday, they were walking to Emmaus and Jesus joined them and said, why are you so sad? They said, have you not heard what's happened in Jerusalem? He said, heard what? Jesus of Nazareth, how they put him to death and everything. And then Jesus began to open the scriptures to them. <laughs> He began to open the scriptures to them about himself. I'll read it to you here. And he says, and he said to them in verse 25 of Luke chapter 24, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew near the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further. And they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for this towards evening and the day is far spent. And he went in and stayed with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened. He is the bread of heaven. And they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while they talked, while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour, returned to Jerusalem, found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen <laughs> indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he, had, how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Oh, what a good thing. Thank God we still share communion. And as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said, Peace to you. And they were terrified, frightened, supposing they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones. As you see, I have so important. <laughs> right there. I'm so happy this is in the scripture. Fulfilling what was written that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, that he saw no corruption. That the same Jesus who was crucified is the Jesus who was risen from the dead. And that he is the firstborn of the new creation. He is the first man who was made manifest after death in perfect righteousness with God. And he now embodies this eternal life. He embodies it for us. That's why we are called the body of Jesus Christ, because the life that lives in him at the Father's right hand is what he gives in us. He is the guarantee that this life is for you and me. And if we can get this revelation, 
then your faith has what it takes to withstand the devils when he attacks you and tells you you're no good, you're not worthy, you've made too many mistakes, you'll never be good enough. You can stand against the lies of the devil and say, I'm not standing here because of my own good deeds, but I'm standing on the rock of ages, Jesus Christ cleft for me. He is my life. He is my righteousness. I live because he lives. This is why I stand to the praise and the glory of his grace. Not on my merits do I stand, but on His mercies do I stand. Oh, what a good thing when your faith is deeply rooted in Jesus Christ who died for you. Oh, praise God, He died for me. Did He die for you? He died for me. He died for me. He died for me. He died for me me so that I could be dead with Him. (coughs) And I'm going to talk to you about that in just a minute. But Jesus Christ, we see him here in his resurrected body. In his resurrected body. And he showed them his hands and his feet. They still did not believe because they marveled. And he said, have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. And he took it and he ate it in their presence. You see, he's one of us. And yet he is from above. He's one of us, yet he's on the other side. Don't let anybody ever tell you, I don't know what's beyond the grave. Who could tell you what's beyond the grave? I can tell you what's beyond the grave. Jesus Christ is beyond the grave. And he is the anchor for my soul to know what's on the other side. Jesus is awaiting me. Hallelujah. I know what's on the other side. I know what's on the other side. Say it. Oh, hallelujah. Have some confidence about your faith. And do not be cowardice in the face of atheists and unbelievers. But with a sweet smile, say, oh, I'm so grateful. I know what's on the other side, and you can know it too. Come on. We know what's on the other side. We know what is waiting us beyond the grave. An inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled. How can you know it? Because it already lives in me. It already lives in me. Even though I'm dead, yet I live. Oh, glory to God when you get this. (laughs) And the disciples, they still didn't believe, right? Because some people say, yeah, but Pastor Robert, come on, come on now. I mean, I'm not Peter here, and I'm not Thomas here. I mean, Thomas got to put his hand hands in his wounds and in his side. Uh, Peter was standing right there. I've never seen it. You get something much more powerful than seeing. What's more powerful than seeing? Receiving. Some people see something, but they don't have it. (laughs) Virginia's granddad, he's in heaven now, his name is Howard. He would pick me up from the airport (laughs) And he always told me the same joke. I'd be terrible disappointed if he didn't tell me the same joke. (laughs) Every time. Oh, that went on for years and years and years. He'd pick me up and we're in the car with, and he would say to me, oh, two ladies are walking down the road. One lady says to the other, looking at a plane up, up in the sky, she says, you'd never see me up there in one of those things. The other lady says, well, you'd never see me up there without it. And then he would laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. <laughs> it was the same joke again and again. And of course, I laughed real hard because to him it was new. But you see, you see the plane, but you're not in it. You can see the church, but it doesn't make you part of it. What makes you part of it is if it comes in you. It's got to come inside of you. And here they saw it. But they didn't believe it. And that shows you where faith comes from. Because look at this. And he said, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. I like that statement. While I was still with you. In other words, I'm on the other side now. (laughs) That all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Come on. 
and he opened their understanding. Say it after me. Say it again. You see, listen, folks. You can study this in Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, you name it. You can have the best translation. You can have the handwriting of John the Beloved or Peter or Paul. But unless he opens your understanding, unless he opens your understanding, come on, this should help you. If you are sitting here and you say, I know, I know, Pastor, I've been going to church all my life, but I don't know if I've got it. <laughs> I don't know that. I cannot say to somebody, I am a new creation. I, I can't say it. I could sing it, but I can't say it. I don't really know that. And you see, you may say, yeah, but I wasn't Peter. I wasn't John. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, you know, and you look at others and you think they have something that you cannot have. And that's not true. This is for the childlike heart. He opens our understanding. How does he open your understanding to comprehend the scriptures? They are looking at Jesus. They're seeing him eating. They see the wounds in his hands and side, and they did not believe. <laughs> Faith comes by hearing and hearing in your heart the word of God. He opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And he says, thus it is written and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Faith came into their heart when he opened their understanding. Oh, what a joy, friends, when understanding comes by His Spirit. The Bible talks in he Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, about the sevenfold manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding. Counsel, might, knowledge, and reverential obedience, fear of the Lord. But you can see the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. It is an attribute of the Holy Spirit coming into your life to give you, or characteristic or nature of the Holy Spirit, to give you understanding <laughs> that the Scriptures open up to you. You see, Jesus Christ is the Scripture and the fulfillment thereof. And it is through Christ that the Scriptures are opened up to us. It is through Jesus that our understanding is enlightened and I am so grateful that I know this, so I keep reading it. I am, said the angel talking to John, just a servant with you and your brethren who have accepted and hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, listen closely, for the substance, essence of the truth revealed by Jesus is the spirit of all prophecy, the vital breath, the inspiration of all inspired preaching and interpretation of the divine will, purpose, including both mine and yours. It's the spirit of Jesus Christ coming into us, opening our understanding. And all of a sudden, you see it. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit begins to teach you, instruct you inwardly to perceive, to understand. And God is able to speak to you because you now have the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith is the Word living in your heart. And He, Jesus says, who has the Word living in His heart will be given more. This is my covenant. I will write my laws in your heart. The Word living in your heart is the life of the Son of God in us. <laughs> and we can only have this because of His death. So, in closing, Romans 6, please. In closing. Oh, I can't wait for next Sunday. I have so much more to share with you. Listen closely. Verse 10. The death that He died, Romans 6, verse 10, 
the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Very powerful. Go back to verse 4. You were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we all should walk in newness of life. Knowing, verse 6, that your old nature of sin, your old man, was crucified with him. <laughs> Many of us, like me, ever struggle with that old man. Okay? How many of us struggle with that old man? Do you ever... <sighs> no, 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 no. Do you ever feel that weary feeling? No, 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 no. Do you know that that is the death of Jesus in you? Do you know that people that don't have his death in him, it's the opposite, it's... You, 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 you. <laughs> Ooh, well, here we go. We're going to party. See, they live for the lust of self. <laughs> they live for the love of the world. They are under the control of evil spirit who lie to them and say, this will give you pleasure. This will satisfy you. That will make you happy. And they listen to this evil spirit and destroy marriages and destroy their bodies and destroy their minds with sex, with drugs, with other, with alcohol and other destructive forces that are so rampant in the world today. And they don't know his death. <laughs> they don't know it. But you know it. Because you say, no, Lord, no, Lord, no, Lord, no, Lord. No more. No more. You don't want to be a slave of sin anymore. You don't want to follow the world anymore. You don't want to go your own way anymore. You say, not my will, but thine will be done. That is the death of Christ. Do you think that he sweat drops of blood for himself? No, my dear friends. He sweat drops of blood for you and me in his holy, righteous agony against that evil spirit of sin and death. It was so evil to him that he sweat drops of blood in agony against it. <laughs> but he embraced it all. He drank the full measure of God's wrath against our sin in the death that he died and utterly satisfied the law which demanded that the soul that sin must die. And he satisfied the law in that he died the death to sin once and for all. And now you can be dead because he died for you. And I know the devil will lie to you and say you can't be dead. <laughs> you can't. You can't help yourself. You need to, and you can say, it's right. I can't help myself. But Jesus can. Amen. But Jesus can. The death he died, he died for me. Say it. The death he died, he died for me again. The death he died, he died for me again. The death he died, he died for me. Oh my goodness. It utterly overwhelms me when I still feel the weakness of that old man. I say, oh, Jesus, Jesus, the death you died. You died for me. Wow, 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 wow. And you cannot but give it to me. You cannot but do the will of the Father because this is the will of God, that even as he died, we should die. And I've been baptized into his death and now I'm crucified with him to the old man. Oh, praise the Lord. He did it all to empower me to be able to have what he has. I couldn't do it myself. I couldn't. How many of you, and now I've got to stop. How many of you ever had the privilege to bear a cross that was too painful and too big for you? 
And you couldn't do it. You threw a fit. You rebelled. You kept questioning. Why? Why? What did I do? And why do I have to go through this? And why do I have to put up with this? And, and why does this keep going? And you kept on complaining. And you, kept, you couldn't do it. You couldn't bear it. Could you? Hello. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Show me your hand. You couldn't do it. Could you? <laughs> but the death he died empowered you to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus. Now, where are you struggling to die to self? Where are you still self-willed, rebellious, lustful, anger fits? Come on, where are you still struggling with that old man? And you say, oh, I have tried faster, but the more I try, the more miserable I become next Sunday. Oh, wretched man of mine, next Sunday. Oh, wretched man of mine, next Sunday. And then some Christians say, I, I need a break from Christianity. I, I just need a break from church for a moment. I, you know, I, I need to go on a holiday. <laughs> I drink something and, and just, you know. And that is such a lie of the devil to make you think you could have a break from Jesus. You know. As if that dead man will not take control over you faster than you can imagine. If you do not live in the death that he died, you will struggle living in the life that he lives to glory of God. But wow, when you embrace his death by his spirit in you and say, Jesus, the death you died, you died for me. I thank you, I die with you daily. I'm dead to the old man so that I may be alive to God. I receive a Jesus. Your power to live dead to sin, your power to live free from the from the evil control of the flesh to live in the joy of your holy heavenly life, Jesus, Jesus. And shoo, that freedom of the Son of God comes into your being and you say, now I can love as he loved. Now I can forgive as he forgives. Now I can bless as he blessed. Now I can be happy and not any more mopey. Now I can be free. Wow, whom the Son sets free. Let's stand together. If you need Jesus to come into your heart, you know you've got to get things sorted. He knows. Put your hand on your heart. Pray this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sins. Forgive me. Cleanse me in your precious blood. Wash me white as snow. I'm yours, Jesus. Save me. Now, Father, I pray as individuals, as couples, as households, as a church family, that more than ever we will embrace the cross and live free from that which hinders us from the fullness of your glory and that we may enter the fullness of all that you predestined us to through Jesus. Oh, wow, Father, glory and joy is ours through Jesus Christ forever. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And the face of God is shining in your heart, giving you understanding, opening up the Scriptures to you, granting you the faith of the Son of God to live by faith as He lives. And the Lord watches over you as the apple of His eye, and He will not. He will not let sin, sin reign over you anymore. He is your freedom. He will not fail to exert his power in you to live free as he is free. And the Lord bless you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen.